Good evening. Welcome to the Toronto International Film Festival. Yes. Thanks for being here. My name is Andrea Picard and I'm a senior curator here and it's my very great pleasure to be introducing tonight's North American premiere of The Eternal Daughter by Joanna Hogg. Before we begin, I would like to thank our lead and major sponsors, Bell, RBC, Bulgari, and Visa for their continued support. Thank you to our major supporters, the Government of Canada, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto for their continued support. This film is... Sure, more, more applause. Mm -hmm. This film is eligible for the People's Choice Award. Please vote for your favorite films at tiff.net slash vote. And we would like to thank A24 for providing us with this film. And we would also like to thank the British Council Film for their generous support. Now, Joanna Hogg was born in London. She is a screenwriter, a director, and her features include Unrelated, Archipelago, Exhibition, The Souvenir, and The Souvenir Part Two. And we did present a full retrospective of her work at the Cinematheque not too long ago, so I hope you were able to see many of those great films. The Eternal Daughter is her new film. It is amazing, it is moving, it is poignant, it is very surprising. And I'm very pleased that both Joanna Hogg and Tilda Swinton are here with us this evening. Please welcome them. Uh, this is very uh, exciting for us. We've been waiting for this moment because we feel this is the first, really the first screening, the first time we're showing it to, um, to all of you. And uh, we can't wait to hear your response. And we really just want to wish you uh, a wonderful screening. And uh, thank you so much for being here, so many of you. Thank you. I, I realize that, that I have never been to Toronto if not for TIFF. Um, it, this is what Toronto is for me, you all. And um, it, honestly, TIFF is one of my favorite festivals. I love festivals, but I, I really think there's something extraordinary about the way you run this festival. <laughs> You really do, in a way that a lot of very beautiful, very highfalutin festivals are run by people who make films or distribute them or write about them. But I really, really value, as you may or may not know, big cinema and big film fans. And you guys totally run this place. Thank you so much for that. And we are incredibly proud to show this very small, very intimate and very personal film to you uh, tonight. And we'll see you later. Have a great screening. Thank you both for being here and for this wonderful film. I want to give as much time to the audience as possible because this is why we're here and this encounter. But I just want to start off to say that this film was such a surprise for so many of us. We didn't know that you were making the film. And then of course there are these elements of surprise, but you said that you had been thinking about this film for so, some time. So could you tell us maybe about the genesis of the film and if that was always planned with Tilda? Yeah. Well, it, was, it still came as a surprise, actually. Um, it somehow happened very quickly, although I'd started thinking about a story um, uh, uh, between a mother and daughter who go away and stay in a hotel, but it was, in a very, it was very different to what you've seen just now. And I felt uh, at the time I couldn't make this film uh, based on my relationship with my mother. It just felt, uh, I felt too bad. I didn't want to upset her. And then, uh, Many years later, we were making the souvenirs and Rosalind had such a strong impression on us all. Tilda's uh, rendition of, of Rosalind was so interesting and so related to both our mothers in a way. And then often I make a film and there's something I take 
from the previous film into the next film. So Rosalind came forward into the eternal daughter and uh, Tilda came into the picture uh, very sharply, uh, uh, not just as one character, but two. And it was Tilda's suggestion, a very brilliant one of playing uh, both parts because originally she was just going to play Julie and uh yes it it then uh it, it became but it you know once it was uh clear who was in it and and where we were going to shoot it it actually we were very lucky uh we had wonderful partners for the film um element pictures and a24 and bbc films who all uh i mean i've never heard of a film being decided so quickly that it would happen and uh, and there it is, and and here we are. So it's still a little bit of a shock that you've suddenly seen a finished film. <laughs> and Tilda, how challenging was it to play that dual role? Well, to be honest, it, it, it's not so much challenging as a sort of grace, really. Um, you know, this is something, as as Joanna says, that we've we've talked about for years. I mean, Joanna and I have known each other since we were ten. We are literally the oldest of friends. She, I've known her more than, uh, longer than anyone that I'm not related to by blood. And I suppose in one way or another, we've been talking forever about our relationship with our mothers. And, um, and then when we made the souvenir films, we talked more specifically about not only the mothers that were represented by Rosalind, uh, our mothers that were represented by, by Rosalind in, in those films, but also this very particular, I think of it as a sort of chasm um, between mothers of our mother's generation and daughters of ours, which seemed very specifically different to the relationship between mothers of my generation and, and, and daughters of my daughter's generation, for example. Um, and we decided that we wanted to make something around that. We the, the souvenirs didn't didn't satiate that sort of didn't scratch that itch enough for us. But when we started making this film, um, even talking about it uh, to a certain extent, I was always going to play Julie, and we were thinking of an older person to play uh, Rosalind, and it was it was me who was quite greedy because I was really in love with Rosalind and I had really loved playing her who said well I don't know maybe and then of course now you've seen it and you're still some of the very few people on the planet who've seen this film you are almost I mean it feels Joanna's right when he says when she says that this feels almost like our first screening because yes we showed it last week in Venice but Venice screening and a Toronto Film Festival screening at very different things. Um, I have to confess. Um, but, but you've now seen it, so now you can see that for the same person to play both people made the film. I mean, it, it, that, that's the story, right? Um, so this is a very long way of, of, of answering your question. It, it was... It was challenging in a sort of lovely problem solving way but it was real grace because it was a it was it, it, it addressed this question which we've wondered about for so many years and we will never find answers for where do we begin and end and where does our mother begin and end that whole question of untangling unentangling ourselves from our mother's uh, there's n there's no one here who doesn't have a mother or didn't have a mother and we all know what that feels like and I think that 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 the wealth of that the well of that question uh, is still interesting to us uh, even having made this film I'm really eager to hear some questions or what or some reactions, reactions actually more than too. questions it's really r responses because we've had so we've had so little we've heard so little from people I see hands already yes right here you? Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that feels distinctly different about this film compared to the souvenir is um, that it seems to be embracing a kind of like a genre exercise a little bit. Um, and in particular, it had me thinking about BBC's ghost stories for Christmas or the BBC. <laughs> I just wondered, is there anything, was there any influence there? Uh, not, not, uh, not. In television, but but British ghost stories. So I was reading a lot of M. R. James, 
Um, and, uh, and particularly Kipling, actually. There was a story that I read called They, which was uh, particularly striking because I was moved to tears reading this short story. And then something clicked about uh, making something ghostly, but something deeply emotional as well. The, the, the two could be interconnected. Um, and also other, other films, obviously The Innocents, One Can't Get Away From, and, uh, and Jacques Tourneur, Night of the Demon, was, uh, is a very different film uh, from what we've made. But it, 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 yes, I, I, I'm always very sparing with what, what I watch of other films. I don't want to be too influenced. So actually reading is better for me. I feel freer, freer to, to, to drink in uh, a story that's on paper. The Kipling passage here is so wonderful in that moment. More questions? Right there in the middle? Yep, you. <laughs> I, I, I would say definitely not a trilogy. I mean, there is a relationship. There's no getting away from it, but it's not, it's not the next episode. Um, but uh, I've, I've found for me that it was, uh, this feels more acutely personal in many ways because it's, it's partly about me now um, and the souvenirs was looking back. So this idea of memory, as you say, I mean, there are many memories within this story, but they were they're, they're, it, it feels like it's happening now, and that makes it much more challenging to, to present this film than the other films. There was a bit more of a distance. This there's no there are no uh, no hold hold bar uh, no barriers uh, to it, and and, uh, and my mother was uh, still living when I was shooting the film, but I was never brave enough to tell her what I was doing. Uh, and uh, she knew uh, that it was a ghost story and she was excited to see that, but then sadly she died when I was editing the film. Um, so I was never able to confront, I mean, she was never able to see the finished film, but yes, it's a lot more personal. But I think she knew. I honestly think she knew. There was a moment when we were shooting um, in the souvenir two and um, we were in her garden and I was dressed very clearly as far as we were concerned as her, but we'd never told her. <laughs> and she said in a very sort of offhand way, well, I would never wear a dress like that. <laughs> and it was, it was so smart. She totally had it, I think. She was very intuitive, in fact, mm -hmm. and I, and I um, took her for a fall when she really uh, wasn't at all. And, uh, but I feel sad that she isn't able to see this film because I think actually she would have enjoyed it. I think she would have. But another real difference to, in, in terms of your question with this film is that this film is, is um, it's a, it, it does pose a question, how does one survive? And the souvenirs, one has survived. It's just almost a question of how did I survive? But the question here is, am I going to? And if I am, how am I going to? There's a sort of openness to it. Um, and um, as Joanna said, for her very personally, I mean, one of the conversations that we were having that out of which this film grew was me relaying to her my experiences of my mother having died, because my mother had already died. Um, a few years before and and I had talked to her about my own experience of entanglement and also very particularly of my experience of having in the few months after my mother died I remember completely unconsciously wearing things that she wore that and saying things that in a certain way, using phrases that she would use that I would never normally use. There was a sort of incarnation that I felt very clear about happening to me. And I was very, very much um, interested in that. And maybe this is one of the seeds of this, 
of this process that we found here. But it is an open question, this film. It's not a, you know, it's, it, 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 there's nothing done. It's all, the doing is all, is all under our noses here. Right here. Well, all of those things you mentioned actually um, were, were, were ones that I relate to. And I think, yeah, this idea of re repetition, I sort of think I'm, I'm very OCD on many levels. Um, but in, in terms of the, the, the Rosalind and the way she takes her pills, that was something I remember my mother doing um, until very recently, in fact. And, uh, and I like this idea of Rosalind taking a sleeping pill and then Julie being left on her own. So when, 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 when Rosalind's sleeping very soundly and Julie just is, is staying awake and, and I've always been very interested but also fearful at night when I've stayed with my mother in the past of, I've, I've always felt like a, a, a night watchman um, that I w I've, I've never been able to sleep in my mother's house and now she's gone I, I still go to her house and I still can't sleep there but when she was alive particularly I felt like I, I, I couldn't go to sleep because everything would fall apart if I did um, so yeah all of those things very resident and, and the sense of place I'm really interested in all the films in, 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 in the, the, the place uh, full of ghosts and uh, uh, just the, the, the sort of quality of the architecture and what that the stories that brings out Wow, so many questions. Right, the second row. No, no. I think I, I said somewhere that I that I wrote it as a short story. I thought if I write a successful ghost story on paper, then that's a good springboard for the film. But it was no, it was never going to be something short. To be precise, the one of very interesting ways in which Joanna works is that she doesn't write a screenplay as such. Um, she writes a document which, I mean, the closest thing I can think of it um, uh, resembling is a sort of short story. Um, but she, it's like a skeleton, it's like a scaffolding um, that, that guides us but doesn't squash us and doesn't, certainly in terms of 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 those who are called upon to be in front of the camera doesn't actually tell us what to say or what to feel or anything that it's it might say something like you know uh evening they are on stage in a cinema in front of an audience talking about a screening but that's it that there, there will be no uh you know description of what's said um, and at some point, somebody might suddenly jump up and, you know, take off all their clothes and, and do cartwheels across the stage. We're still hoping. <laughs> but, um, but, but she won't impose that on us. That's something that will come up um, uh, it, out of the scaffolding. And, um, and that's both incredibly liberating, as you can imagine, but it also it's quite rigorous because it means that one's not just as actors, as I hear actors tend to do, they tend to learn lines and try and make them sound fresh. Uh, there's none of that here. This is about, uh, about the people responding, not only with what they might say, but also with what, how they might move or the faces they might, they might display. And so it's a very rigorous, but again, very liberating process and very, very unique in my experience. Andra? Oh, great question. Of art direction and costuming and you know, set design your thing. How does that, how do you work on those elements of your film if you're using uh, less structured uh, template, for lack of a phrase? 
Well, yeah, that's interesting because, yeah, although the, 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 the template or this document is slim, it's like 30 pages, it is also very dense and takes me many months and with some of the projects, even years to write. So it kind of belies, the sort of simplicity of it belies what's gone behind it. And what's gone behind it is many conversations with my collaborators. I've worked with this wonderful production designer called Stéphane Collange, and he's worked with me since my first feature film. And so we have almost an unspoken form of communication now. And I love, I'm even right now longing to talk to him about something I don't even know what it's going to be, the next film that I do. It's so exciting to throw ideas around with him. And it's the, same, uh, it's the same with Hella, the editor I work with, who I've also worked with since my first film. And these collaborators are, are beyond just collaborators. They're friends, they're, they're, they, I, I, I share, you know, we share ideas and, 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 and develop things together. And, and so it's those conversations. And uh, there was a lot that Stefan, for example, could do in the hotel to prepare the decor and uh yes it's uh it's very elaborate so there's lots of things we can do before and then and then at a certain point everything gets thrown up in the air and we see what happens each day but i'm aware there's so many questions i want to hear all the questions <laughs> right here So very simply, um, we would, so there would be, you know, day three at breakfast, at dinner, you know, they're having a conversation and there will be some small indications. At this point, Rosalind starts talking about the past and we will decide who is it who initiates this conversation. It might be Julie. And this is all we need to know to decide that we're going to shoot Julie first. So I would be dressed as Julie and I would start improvising this conversation at the dinner table. And Joanna behind the camera would respond as Rosalind, but fixing nothing really. We play the scene together and work out the shape of it and what's said, but then of course, you know, very soon after Tilda's left on her own and in, in a remarkable way um, was having, having a dialogue with herself. Um, so it's, uh, it, 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 I mean, I still watch the film, uh, very rarely now, but, and, and I forget that Tilda is playing both these parts. I think it's just so seamless and one, they, they have such different energies, both of them, which is entirely what Tilda has brought to these roles, um, to these people. They, they they the, the gestures came out. I mean, the gestures of Rosalind and the way Rosalind speaks is, you know, years of, uh, you know, <laughs> years of growing up uh, with her mother and, uh, and then observing my mother as well. So it's, uh, it, 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 it seemed impossible, this idea we could shoot the film in the way that I like to shoot my films using improvisation. But we, we managed it by, by being ultra simple about the, the frames. And we didn't, I didn't want to have a stand in for Tilda. I didn't want Tilda mm. to be talking uh, to a stranger. So uh, uh, she's, uh, yes, we, we, it was entirely designed to help Tilda. F I, I wanted Tilda to feel as these two different people completely uh, uh, um, unencumbered. We only have time for one more question, Fred, in the back. Ah, really, really interesting. Uh, I think uh, uh, it's. I think this way of working is so unique to this film. I don't think it's possible to take anything of the way Tilda and I work together 
into something else unless she's playing two roles in an, in another film. So of course, there's always things to learn uh, from each film, but uh, uh, but maybe the thing to learn is that you can find a way. You know, if you want to work in, a, in a, with a certain method, you can find a way of doing it, whatever the story is. Um, so it's uh, yeah, I, I I think it's it's completely unique to this to this story. I'm afraid we're out of time, but I see there's so many more questions. <laughs> Please thank you so much to Joanna Hogg and Tilda Swinton.